pleasant good day everyone um welcome to another tip tip five and in tip five six and seven i'm going to focus on looking at deficit thinking and deficit mentality in schools but more than anything else we're going to focus on how do we ensure that our approaches are strength based approaches how do we ensure that what we are doing for our students come from a place of strength, a language of hope in many cases, so to speak. And so I hope everything is going great and practical. Also, I hope as you are planning, we're gonna talk about that, in a th I think in tip number eight, as you are planning your lessons, I want you to be intentional about the resources you're using, the videos you're using, the language in those resources, so you can be prepared for your lesson. So. In thinking about deficit thinking, I know some of us have had conversations about that. Some of you will be having those conversations over the spring and the summer. And some of you have been having this conversation in other areas in research and in other courses, fundamentals and some of your content area. What exactly is deficit thinking? So deficit thinking is, as quoted by Sharma 2018, it's a thinking. It's a very common way of thinking which affects our general way of being in and constructing the world around us. And we have to remember that the our construction, our idea many times of the world and people and, and stories and places comes from how we were brought up, in the spaces we grew up, how we, 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 we understood those conversations, right? Differences from the norm are immediately seen as being deprived, negative, and disadvantaged. And with, with that comes stereotypes and assumptions, a quick, quick 30 second story. I remember when I remember when I went to Atlanta in 2001 to teach, I tell the story all the time. Students were wonderful students that I had um, at that particular um, time. When they were asking me questions about Jamaica, they asked a lot of questions that were just shocking. If I lived in a tree house, if I, you know, went to the beach every day, if I caught my own food, you know, you know, if my favorite singer is Bob Marley, what they were doing, some people may see it as as deficit and, 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 and assumptions and stereotypes. All of that is actually true. But what that they were doing was sharing information that they considered as facts based on what they were exposed to. And that is why it is so important for us as educators, not the students now, as us as educators to have a wider lens of the world around us, not a narrow view. If I always say to persons, if the only thing you know about the world is what happens on your cul-de-sac, then you don't know the world. So I want us to make sure we sit in that space of cultural humility and sit in the space of a learner, a learner mindset so we can understand differences. So what happened is that the differences are seen as deprived, negative and disadvantaged, and it never questions the legitimacy of what is deemed to be normal or does it consider that differences may actually go beyond expected norms. I am having so many conversations right now with people who teach ESL and they are looking at strength-based approaches. You know, is it that this child does not know Canadian English? Or is it that this student has three other languages? You see the difference? This student has three other languages and is learning English as a fourth language. Two different message, two different views. So what happened with deficit I want to underline is that the differences from the norm are immediately seen as being deprived, negative and disadvantaged. And I want us to always think about that. When we see difference, how do we view difference? So you're gonna be in schools and you are gonna see difference. Many of us come from spaces that we are not teaching in spaces where we come from. You are going to see difference. How do you as an educator see those differences? And we get into that in, in, in other tips. How do you see attendance? How do you see late arrival? What is the story behind some of these things, right? And what, what, what this does, this is a danger. This is a danger. It discourages teachers. It discourages us from recognizing the positive value of certain differences. And that is why we talk a lot about culturally relevant and responsive pedagogy, where we understand that, no, 
Culturally relevant and responsive pedagogy is not about a book with a black girl or a First Nations person or someone in a wheelchair on the cover. It's deeper than that. It's holding the high expectation for those students. It's seeing their different abilities and valuing that, what they bring to school. I remember years ago as a young teacher, we, were, I would talk, we talked about how do we value the cultural currency our students bring to school. I haven't heard that terminology in a while. So this is not new. As a young teacher back in Jamaica, 1995, I remember talking about valuing the cultural currency. And I know somebody's saying, but everybody in Jamaica is the same. <laughs> I hope nobody's saying that. No, there are cultural differences with, uh, with, with people. And that's one of the, the, the problems we have also is that we, 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 we think that everybody's the same because everybody looks the same, so to speak. But we have to go beyond, beyond that and look at the intersectionalities and who our students are. And so in doing this, you know, you know, and in turn, we blame our students. And this is what is happening in many of our schools. So our focus, or your focus, as you think about deficit thinking, I want you to ask yourself some critical questions. And here comes the big word about the systems. Ask some critical questions about ourselves and the systems about the ways in which deficit thinking is perpetuated in our school. You know, there's a, there's a narrative in many universities that when a teacher comes in, a professor comes in, and that professor is other, that professor is of a different identity from what you're used to. Remember, I am still the first black professor for many of you. And some of you may not question myself or the Asian or the First Nation or other professor in a certain way, but we see it in many ways. And that is a part of deficit where you are taught this is what excellence looks like this is what it's supposed to be anything from that norm something must be wrong something must be less than and we have to be honest about these things and question ourselves reflexive reflexive thinking and we're going to look at student identity and, and sense of belonging the way in which the deficit thinking allow our students to do not feel a sense of belonging or foster the lack of belonging so to speak and the language be very mindful i'm going to talk about this again in the next video and the next video and absolutely the one about lesser planning be mindful of the language the language we're used to that deficit language i was at school the other day and they're talking about student profile and student record and student history and look at the terminologies of a profile what is that you know so we're getting into language we are learning and we are unlearning and more than anything else start get that toolbox get that toolbox and start packing those strength based approaches in those toolboxes so deficit thinking leads to stereotyping we talk about that and prejudging it marginalizes certain people on the basis of misinformation and misconstructions very important what do you know i always ask you know persons tell me what do you know if i go to a space that is very white and you know i'm doing a workshop i would say tell me what you know about black men if you, you know and i invite them to be honest because they I'm, i create that space for them to have those brave conversations and sometimes i give them the, the, the permission to do it anonymous because i want them to be honest to say it and they will tell you what they think about someone in a wheelchair, what they think about a trans student, what do you think about someone who is an immigrant? When you hear the word Africa, what, what comes to mind? Ask yourself, when you hear the word Africa, when you hear the word Guyana, Ghana, Niagara, Jamaica, what comes to mind when you hear the word Paris, when you hear the word Istanbul, what comes to mind, what image? Your, it, it comes to mind first. So we have to be careful of those. Deficit thinking is rooted in a blame. And I'm going to close this section on this slide and this slide about the blame, about the rooted out how, how deficit thinking is rooted in blame. And I want us to close on this slide. So in deficit thinking, we think we need to fix our students, which 
You know, we need to address why the student is not doing well. We need to address, you know, what's going on at the home. We need to address, you know, what's happening with their attendance. We need to address why the student comes without a book or a laptop. We need to address, you know, that student may, may, may have an order. And we need to address um, the language a student uses. We need to address those things. We need to fix the student. Many times what we fail to understand is that many of the issues in our school that our students are facing, they are systematic. We have to be honest about the systematic issues in our school. How do we move from fixing people to fixing system? And I love this activity. I use this in my workshop. I'm sharing this with you all. And we have amazing discussions on fixing the system. And when you go into spaces where educators are honest, they will tell you about issues within the system that impact our students and how these are prevented our students from doing their best or being their best or seeing their best. How we do awards in school, who gets to be awarded, who gets on a team, who gets on a committee, who gets on the panel. We have seen this over the years. A, a student of mine did an amazing presentation on what happens in, 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 in um, performing arts schools in the TDSB and in other boards and who gets in and how they prepare to get in. And you will see the issues within systems. And then we ask ourselves, who will fix those systems? And that's for another tip. So continue to be mindful, continue to be engaged. Teaching is not a rush. When you finish your lesson, take the time out to do a reflection on your lesson. Not just rush to the next lesson, because that's not how you grow and that's not how you tool yourself. So I encourage you to do that. Be Sit in the space of reflection as we continue these tips. Have a wonderful day.